This is Join Us in France, episode 161. 50 must-know French phrases for hungry visitors. Welcome to Join Us in France, episode 161. We're talking about French restaurants today. But first, let me take a second to tell you what the show is all about. I'm Annie, and Join Us in France is the only travel show exclusively dedicated to helping you prepare your big trip to France. I was born and raised in France, but I went to the UK and the US for college, and then I lived in the US for 20 years of my life. I have been back living in France for over a decade now. I didn't work in the travel industry. This podcast is something I created because being a bit of a geek and having lived far away from France for so long, I was eager to rediscover my own my country. occasional co-host and, turned and good friend Elise also has had the to opposite talk about life experience. People. She was born and raised in the U.S., moved to France to complete college. She is an art historian and she has been living in France and working in the travel industry for a long time. Because Elise is a professional tour guide, we decided to organize small group tours a few times a year. I created a small business called Addicted to France, and you can read reviews about Addicted to France tours on TripAdvisor. To see what tours are available on what dates, go to addictedtofrance.com. You may or may not have noticed that I made a mistake and released the last episode that was about Lasco 4 earlier than planned. I just got done telling you that new episodes would come out on Saturday and then I released it on Wednesday by mistake. It was an accident. Oh, well, it doesn't matter what day I choose so long as I stick to it, right? So going forward, it will be new episodes on Wednesdays and email extras on Saturday. On the show, you will also hear from different listeners who visited France and went to share how it went, what they learned. They want to give you specific recommendations. They want people who are going after them to learn from their experience. I call those trip reports, but I could also have called them listener travel tips, listener insider tips, or listener trip reviews. The point is... You get to hear candid reviews of other people's vacation. You know they are not fake reviews because you can hear it straight from their mouth. And we all help one another have a better vacation experience in France. At the end of the show, you will hear how you can contact me if that's something you'd like to do. And I'm not just looking for glowing reviews. I do ask people to bring up things that didn't go as well as they had hoped. This one is like an extended French tip of the week episode where I'll share with you 50 sentences that I think you'll need at a French restaurant. You don't need to memorize them, but at least if you can understand when people tell you these things, I think you'll do much better. A lot of this is going to be in French and I'll put some of these in the show notes, but the full list is going to be sent out as an extra to the email subscribers. And unless I mess up the schedule for that as well, (laughs) uh, this extra should go out next Wednesday. If you're interested in this episode, you should also check out my list of best value restaurants in Paris. On the Join Us in France website, you'll find it under Resource and then Restaurants. Stay tuned after the interview to hear my thanks to listeners who support the show on Patreon, my personal update, what's happening around me, how to connect with me, and any news concerning the show. And now, here's the interview. So now, here's my 50 French restaurant phrases for hungry visitors. Let's face it. One of the biggest reasons why people come to France is for the food, right? We will serve up some delicious canards. You'll have the most beautiful menus and prefix you've ever dreamed of. 
The pâtisserie will make your mouth water and even at the end of that full meal, you'll want the dessert because it's so delicious and so beautiful. And well, the wine, you know, if you're not tipsy at some point uh, in France, that would be a little bit surprising. Anyway, I'm not saying you should memorize all these sentences to eat wonderfully well at French restaurants, but... Just the fact that you're willing to try some French will charm your waiter and will make them want to help you. And also it will help you understand better. So here you go. Number one, voulez-vous manger en terrasse ou à l'intérieur? Do you want to eat on the terrace or inside? Voulez-vous manger en terrasse ou à l'intérieur? Number two, est-ce que vous voulez quelque chose à boire pour commencer? Would you like to order some drinks to start with? Est-ce que vous voulez quelque chose à boire pour commencer? Number three. Est-ce que vous avez choisi? Have you chosen already? Est-ce que vous avez choisi? Number four. Que souhaitez-vous commander? Que souhaitez-vous commander? What would you like to order? Voulez-vous un apéritif? Would you like an apéritif? Voulez-vous un apéritif? Number six. Est-ce que vous voulez prendre un apéritif? This is very much like the previous one. So, voulez-vous un apéritif? And est-ce que vous voulez prendre un apéritif? Are pretty much the same thing. But, you know, this is, this is a real language. It's not just one way of saying things. We can say things with small variations that I can't predict how this person is going to say. But if you hear apéritif... It's a pre-meal drink, and it's usually alcohol, but you could order a juice or whatever you'd like. Number seven, est-ce que vous voulez commander? Would you like to order? Est-ce que vous voulez commander? Number eight, est-ce que vous voulez voir la carte? Do you want to see the menu? Yeah, la carte is the menu in French. If you ask for the menu, they will bring you the day special. So that's something that you need to know. Number nine, voici la formule du jour. Here's your daily specials. Usually those are written out on a board or something uh, or on a loose piece of paper that they print out differently every day. Voici la formule du jour. Number 10, le menu d'aujourd'hui est écrit ici. The daily specials are written here. Sometimes you go into a restaurant and you can't even see where they wrote them. <laughs> so, le menu d'aujourd'hui est écrit ici. Number 11. Souhaitez-vous un dessert? Would you like some dessert? Souhaitez-vous un dessert? Number 12. Voulez-vous un café? Would you like some coffee? Voulez-vous un café? Number 13. A different way of saying the same thing. Est-ce que vous prendrez un café? Est-ce que vous prendrez un café? Would you like some coffee? Est-ce que vous prendrez un café? Number 14. Est-ce que vous prendrez un dessert? Would you like some dessert? Est-ce que vous prendrez un dessert? Number 15. Un moment, s'il vous plaît. One moment, please. If they come back and ask you for your order too fast, you can say, un moment, s'il vous plaît. Number 16. Je ne sais pas encore. Je ne sais pas encore. So you could say, I don't know yet. I don't know what I'm going to order yet. Je ne sais pas encore. Number 17. Une grande carafe d'eau, s'il vous plaît. A big pitcher of water. And this implies tap water. Okay? Une grande carafe d'eau, s'il vous plaît. Une grande carafe d'eau, s'il vous plaît. Uh, now, tap water in France is fine to drink anywhere. I think it tastes fine. But if you're used to bottled water, maybe you'll need to order... Uh, bottled water as well in France. And in that case, you would ask, number 18, une grande bouteille d'eau minérale, s'il vous plaît. Ou une bouteille d'eau minérale, s'il vous plaît. A large bottle of mineral water or a bottle of mineral water. Number 19, pouvons-nous commander, s'il vous plaît? Can we order, please? Pouvons-nous commander, s'il vous plaît? Number 20, l'addition, s'il vous plaît. The bill, please. L'addition, s'il vous plaît. Number 21. Payez à la caisse, s'il vous plaît. Pay at the cash register, please. Payez à la caisse, s'il vous plaît. This is really important. If in France, the bill takes forever to come, don't fret. Just get up and go to the cash register and pay there. You don't have to wait for half an hour to get your 
bill, okay? And too many tourists do that because they think they just need to sit there until somebody brings them the bill. You don't have to sit there. Just get up, go to the cash register, and take care of it right there. Number 22, qu'est-ce que vous me recommandez? What do you recommend? Qu'est-ce que vous me recommandez? Number 23, c'est quoi ça? What is this? C'est quoi ça? So you could, you know, if you have an item on the menu that you don't recognize, which happens to all of us because sometimes restaurants, they get really flowery with their, with they name things. And you're like, what the, what is that? Um, I have to ask that question all the time. And I'm a French speaker. <laughs> so, c'est quoi ça? Number 24. Je ne comprends pas ceci. Pouvez-vous m'expliquer, s'il vous plaît? So you could point at something and you'd say, I don't understand this. Can you explain? Can you explain, please? Je ne comprends pas ceci. Pouvez-vous expliquer, s'il vous plaît? Number 25. Avez-vous un menu enfant? Do you have a children's menu? Avez-vous un menu enfant? French restaurants often have a kid's menu, but not necessarily. So, But if they don't, then they will think it's fine for you to uh, either give a little bit of yours to the kid or have two kids share a, a regular dish or something. They won't, you know, you, nobody's going to give you problems about that. Number 26. Je ne prendrai que le plat principal. I only want the main course. Je ne prendrai que le plat principal. Yeah, I, I mentioned the menu before. So that's the daily special. And typically a menu will have uh, an appetizer, a main dish and a dessert. And sometimes it works like you get, if you get appetizer and dessert, you, you pay like say 15. Or you could also choose to do main dish and dessert for 15. Or some places they will say, okay, the main dish... Any of these three main dishes, like 12, and then uh, if you want appetizer, you add five, and if you want dessert, you add, you add five. You know, every restaurant works it out a little bit differently. But you could, even if the menu includes all three, you could say, hey, uh, I just want the, the main course, and that's je ne prendrai que le menu principal. And by the way, uh, restaurants that include wine are getting rare these days. I, I'm not seeing very much of that going on. It used to be that almost every restaurant would automatically include a, at least a, a quarter of a liter of wine, which is two glasses of wine. And they don't do that anymore because uh, uh, French police officers are, on, are watching and uh, we can't drink and drive. <laughs> we just can't. So uh, that's why people don't drink and drive as much as they used to. And that is a good thing. Number 27. Je suis végétarien. Je ne mange ni viande ni poisson. I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat meat or fish. You have to tell people that because to some people in France, if you're vegetarian, that means you must necessarily eat fish. And they will show you the fish menu. <laughs> no, not necessarily. So, je suis végétarien. Je ne mange ni viande ni poisson. 28. Nous voulons payer séparément, s'il vous plaît. We want to split the bill, please. Nous voulons payer séparément, s'il vous plaît. This is never a problem, even with a big group, but you do have to mention that at the beginning of the meal. So you will, before you, they take your order, you say, nous voulons payer séparément, s'il vous plaît. And then they know to enter it separately and it's not a problem. Number 29, je voudrais réserver une table pour deux personnes pour demain soir, s'il vous plaît. I'd like to reserve a table for two people tomorrow night, please. Je voudrais réserver une table pour deux personnes, pour trois personnes, pour quatre personnes, whatever, however many, you know, number of, uh, of people there are of you, pour demain soir, s'il vous plaît. This is something that you can do easily in France if you are walking by a restaurant that you'd like to come back. Two, you can just say, you know, pop in and order and reserve for tomorrow. Number 30, vous commencez le service du soir à quelle heure? What time do you start to serve in the evening? Vous commencez le service du soir à quelle heure? Number 31, vous arrêtez le service à quelle heure? What time do you stop service? Yeah, especially at lunchtime, they're not going to serve non-stop. If it's a restaurant that opens and closes at specific times, they're not going to serve people. They're, they won't even take an order after like 1.30 or 1.45 or something. It just depends. So you need to ask them. 
Number 32, vous ouvrez à quelle heure, s'il vous plaît What time do you open, please Vous ouvrez à quelle heure, s'il vous plaît Number 33, je vais prendre le menu à 18 euros. I will have the 18 euro menu special, please. Je vais prendre le menu à 18 euros. Number 34, comme entrée, je choisis dot, dot, dot. So, for my starter, I would like whatever. Number 35, comme plat principal, je voudrais, so for the main course, I would like. Number 36, comme dessert, je voudrais. And then whatever, and you could even point at that point. Number 37, pour votre viande, vous souhaitez quelle cuisson? How would you like your meat done? Pour votre viande, vous souhaitez quelle cuisson? So here, is, here, are, your, here are your choices. You have four of them. 38, bleu, s'il vous plaît. Very rare, please. Bleu is extremely rare. Yeah, it's, it's also extremely tasty, but you need to know it's very, very rare. 39, saignante, s'il vous plaît. That's rare. Saignante, s'il vous plaît. Number 40, à point, s'il vous plaît. Medium, please. À point, s'il vous plaît. And what French people call medium, you might call rare in America. So beware of that. And number 41, bien cuite, s'il vous plaît. Well done, please. Bien cuite, s'il vous plaît. So your choices are bleu, saignante, à point, bien cuite. And then number 42, You could explain further. <laughs> J'aime la viande bien cuite, s'il vous plaît. Je n'aime pas qu'il reste du rouge. I like my meat well done. I don't like to see any pink. J'aime la viande bien cuite, s'il vous plaît. Je n'aime pas qu'il reste du rouge. This is important. French people eat, we eat our beef very rare. And we don't understand when people want it cooked all the way through. So tell them. <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise. I think uh, meat, beef, when it's too cooked is not very good, but that's my personal opinion. 43. Où sont les toilettes, s'il vous plaît? Where are the bathrooms, please? Où sont les toilettes, s'il vous plaît? Number 44. Pouvez-vous répéter plus lentement, s'il vous plaît? Could you repeat more slowly, please? Pouvez-vous répéter plus lentement, s'il vous plaît? Number 45. Pouvez-vous expliquer en anglais, s'il vous plaît? Could you explain in English, please? Pouvez-vous expliquer en anglais, s'il vous plaît? Number 46. Avez-vous un vin de la maison? Do you have a house wine? Avez-vous un vin de la maison? Number 47. Avez-vous des pichets de vin, s'il vous plaît? Do you have wine pitchers, please? Avez-vous des pichets de vin, s'il vous plaît? In that case, it's always the house wine. It's always fairly inexpensive. And they will ask you for uh, either small or, or uh, large. So the, the medium is going to be uh, two glasses, le quart, un quart de rouge, un quart de blanc. So a quarter of uh, red or white or whatever is going to be two glasses, a un demi, That's a half. That's going to be, uh, yeah, four glasses of wine. Not huge glasses, but four glasses of wine. Number 48. J'ai des allergies alimentaires. I have food allergies. And to be able to specify which ones you have, you should get the, uh, the card, the PDF with the allergy card that I'm sending out as an extra. Uh, if you haven't gotten it yet... Just subscribe to the, to the extras and you'll get it because I'm going to rotate them. Or you could ask me for it. If you need it quick, ask me for it. Number 49. Un peu plus de pain, s'il vous plaît. Un peu plus de pain, s'il vous plaît. Ah, see, I did it two different ways this time. I said un peu plus de pain. That would be the Paris way of saying things. And the southern way of saying things would be un peu plus de pain, s'il vous plaît, where we pronounce the S. But it means some more bread, please. And then number 50, I saved a funny one for the end. <laughs> This is what we do when we want to get the waiter's attention. We do not say garçon, ever. Don't do that. You will get slapped. But what we do is, s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> that kind of tone. <laughs> that means, come on, get over here. <laughs> Okay? All right. Enjoy your meals in France. 
Like I said at the beginning, you don't have to memorize all this, but if you use a few of them anyway, they will love you and they will take good care of you. And of course, never step into any restaurant or address any person in France without saying bonjour. You say bonjour first, you walk in, you look at the waiter, you say bonjour, une table pour deux personnes, s'il vous plaît. A table for two. Oh, I didn't add this one. See, this is number 51. This is the bonus. <laughs> All right. Bon appétit, everybody. Bon appétit. Thank you, Laren, for signing up to support the show on Patreon this week. And thank you to all the patrons who support the show month after month. I want you to know how much I appreciate your continued support. Most donors pull the trigger and sign up to support the show on Patreon because they feel this show brings them a lot of value and they want to give back. But the way it works on Patreon is that there are rewards that go along with different levels of donation. So to support the show and Patreon and see the various rewards you can get, go to patreon.com forward slash join us. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com. Join us, no spaces or dashes. I'm always tweaking the rewards to keep it interesting, both for you and for me. So check back occasionally. And if you don't want to support the show on Patreon, but you want to support the show in some other way, go to joinusinfrance.com forward slash support, where I give you other suggestions, some of which will not cost you a penny. For my personal update this week, I want to tell you about something that uh, says a lot about French life. It's very quirky, and also it might make you uh, laugh, and it might also make you angry. We'll see. This week, I had the pleasure of assisting my daughter register for her second year of university. She's been in the U.S. all summer working as a camp counselor. She started that job on June 15th and registration here in France didn't open until July 4th. So she couldn't do it before she left. She didn't take her computer to camp because she wasn't sure if there would be a safe place to store it. And these days you can do everything from a phone or a tablet, right? So, well, apparently you can't log into the university website with a cell phone or tablet, which we hadn't thought of that at all. So, mom and dad to the rescue. <laughs> the first time I logged into the, the university registration site, it told me that it was closed for the weekend. Yes, you heard me right. The university registration site closes at 8.30 p.m. on Fridays and doesn't open again until 8 a.m. on Mondays. So, this is a website that needs a weekend. <laughs> and it also closes at 8.30 p.m. every night and reopens every a.m., every 8 a.m. the next morning. It's, it's just crazy. This site looks like something straight out of the early days of the Internet in the 90s. But hey, eventually I got used to the strange logic and the navigation that was bizarre. And I found right where I needed to go to get it done. It really helps that I had to go back five or six times because um, the first time I managed to get in, the system would let me register her for all sorts of things, but not computer science. And I thought, what? You know, that's her declared major. That doesn't make any sense. So I called and talked to a human. She wasn't sure why. So she said, well, I'll call you back later today. And I thought, yeah, right. You're going to call me back. Yeah. But she did. She did. And she told me, yeah, she can't register yet for computer science because not all her computer science grades for the first year have been entered. And I told her, what do you mean? I can see her grades like she has her transcript. And she said, well, but that's a different website. So they keep different websites. There's the official one that's used for registration and the one that's used to communicate to the students. It's really crazy. So she said, they're working on it. Check back again at the end of the week, which I did. And of course, it didn't work when I checked again later that week. But at least then it had a note on there. And it was tiny, tiny little print. But it had a note that said, hey, um, some people can't register yet because their grades aren't entered. Okay, so I thought, you know, this is France. I took it in stride. I think most people would have been really frazzled by that whole thing. But in France, you just have to accept that this is how it works sometimes. Well, eventually, I got it done. It took way too long. 
It was much too much effort, but I got it done. She's all registered. And you're probably thinking, oh, this is terrible. How do you put up with that sort of terrible service? Why do French people not care about having a well-run university? They obviously have computer scientists. I mean, she's registering for computer science. That's kind of a shame, isn't it? Well, and you're probably thinking, yeah, in the U.S., we'd never put up with that. Okay, yeah. No, in the U.S., you wouldn't put up with that. That's true. But the part of the story that I didn't tell you about yet is that at the end of the registration process, I had to get out my credit card to pay for school. I had to pay for the whole year in one fell swoop. And if you're paying for your kids to attend college in America right now, you are going to hate me. So, But I'm going to tell you anyway. The year of school... And we call it les droits de scolarité, which I would translate into tuition, was 168 euros. 168 euros. So that's maybe 200 bucks for the year, for the whole year. And students in France, they need to have their own health insurance. The health insurance for the year was 217 euros. And we're not talking about catastrophic coverage where she'd have to pay $10,000 before the insurance puts in a dime. No, no, that's great health insurance with no copays, and it costs her 217 euros for the year. Now, granted, this is for college students, and college students are the healthiest section of the population overall. But I don't know, how much would you pay for that sort of coverage in America? I don't even want to think about it. And get this. My young cousin, who lives in Paris, she had to go through the same process to register for her university, and she's going to be starting her third year of economy and finance at the Sorbonne, Sorbonne University in Paris. And we're both in Spain right now, so she didn't bring her computer either because she does everything from her phone, and so she asked if she could use my computer. Well, her tuition for the year for the Sorbonne is 268 euros for the year. She pays the same 212 for health insurance. I should explain that in France, as soon as you're 16, you get your own health card. The system considers that you're your own person. And so you can actually disassociate yourself completely from your parents' health insurance starting at 16. And if you have your own bank account, they wouldn't even see the copays that you get reimbursed for. So it's completely private starting at 16. So I hope by now you understand why French people don't care so much that our kids can't log in to the university registration site using their tablet or their phone. And we don't care so much that we have to call back a few times and get things and wait for things to get checked in and all that. I mean, it, it is, it, it's a pain, but we put up with it because it, the whole year for my daughter is costing me 406 euros. And that's including health insurance, uh, tuition, various tiny fees for this and that. You know, it's just unbelievably cheap. And that's for second year computer science. And the cousin who goes to the Sorbonne, it's 506 euros. So... <laughs> You know, living in France is not always fantastic. There are some drawbacks, but the price of healthcare and of uh, universities is definitely not one of the drawbacks. The best way to connect with me is to email me, Annie, at joinusinfrance.com or search for the Join Us in France closed group on Facebook. Lots of great conversations are happening on the Join Us in France closed group on Facebook. It's a great place to come ask specific questions about your trip and you will find lots of people willing to help out quickly there. If you have feedback on what you heard on an episode, leave me a voicemail, 1-801-806-1015. That's a U.S. number where the only thing you can do is leave a voicemail. It does not ring at my house, thank goodness, because there are listeners all over the world and I don't want to get woken up. I will play your feedback on the show unless you indicate that you don't want it played. I create a post for every episode of the show and you can find it by typing joinusinfrance.com forward slash and the episode number. 
This is where you can go see the list of all the things and places we talked about in each episode, the recommendations we gave, where you can see those pesky French names spelled out, and I even add timestamps to most of the episodes so you can jump straight to the right place to listen again. There are social share buttons on each episode on joinusinfrance.com as well. You know people who are going to be visiting France. You need to help them not fall into tourist traps by telling them about this resource. They'll have a better time in France and they'll thank you for it. Joinusinfrance.com is also where you can sign up to get the show extras. I don't email more than once a week. I never share your email address with anybody else. And I always add something extra that will help you on your big trip to France. So I encourage you to sign up for that on the website. Thank you so much for listening and for sharing the show on social media. You need to know that I mostly rely on word of mouth to reach new listeners. So anytime you can open your mouth about the show, it is fantastic. Have a wonderful week and I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Au revoir. The Join Us in France Travel Podcast is written and produced by Annie Sargent and copyright 2017 by Addicted to France. It is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license.